Grab your tricolors, wargamers, because tonight we are going back to France. The year is 1793, and the Republicans have smashed the ruling monarch's forces in Paris. However, they've run into a bit of a difficulty out in the hinterlands because the country folk are not down with all of the radical changes that are being made. In our last episode of En Garde by Osprey, we saw the villagers successfully defend their church from the new government that would have locked the doors. Not messing around, the government has launched a swift counterattack. This time, they've sent not just a handful, but they've sent six rank two soldiers, led by a single rank four lieutenant, to teach those filthy peasants a lesson. Further down the road, and on the edge of town, as you can see from the fields, is a little bit of a surprise for the Republicans. As you can see, we've got one, two, three, four villagers, and in this case, what you're looking at is the La Belle Corbeaux. In other words, this is Pa Corbeau. He and his three sons are veterans of the... Well, the French and Indian War would have been too early for these guys to have fought in. Pa might have fought in it, but the French and Indian War was part of the Seven Years' War, and you're looking at about a 40-year gap, so Pa would have to be 60 years old. Maybe his kids fought in the American War for Independence on the side of the colonists, and then uh, fought in Shays' Rebellion and had enough of all that American jazz, moved back to France, and found themselves swept up in a new kind of revolution. So what you're looking at here, we've actually kind of reversed the roles. We've got three. The, the, the boys here are rank three, and Pa is rank four. Just so you know what to expect, this is Louis over here. And Louis is both, he is a scout and he is fast. I'll show you what that means as the game goes on. Pa himself is a sharpshooter and he's very tough. This is Jovan, who is powerful and tough. You can kind of guess what these mean. And this over here is Odile, who is an agile sharpshooter. And with that out of the way, I'm going to reset the camera to kind of show you the overall battlefield. And we'll get started. Before we do that, though, I wanted to show you the little white patch that you see on, on Odile's hat. And over here, I think yep, he's got one on his hat, too. That is the badge of the fighters in the Vendée, which is the region of France that was kind of royalist, but really just more anti-Republican. And they adopted a patch that looks a little something like this. This is the face burka that the government makes me wear. And I actually liked the symbol so much, and in keeping with what I'm doing, I thought, hey, why don't I go ahead and wear one for myself? The, this is, of course, the Sacred Heart and the cross for which they fought. And when the government tried to lock the doors of their church, they grabbed their guns and said, Mais non, mon frère. So, with that out of the way, I'm going to move the camera back, show you the overall battlefield that we're looking at, and the victory conditions, and we'll get started. So here we see the lay of the land. The village starts over here in this corner, and having been alerted to the presence of the blues, the family Corbeaux has come rushing out. Uh, we've got a series of lowlands over here. There's no fords across the stream. It's difficult ground. We've got a line of hills that separate the low swamps from the roadway itself, and then we have a series of woods and broken ground. The on the fixed-in-place objects, the rocks, that log, uh, there's a tree stump over here somewhere, those provide hard cover, and they don't move. The trees are merely representative of the fact that these are forests, and they can be moved at any time. Anywhere within those templates is going to be treated as cover. You can hide in there. Not a problem. All these guys need to do is get to the town. They're going to try to do as much damage to the Corbeau family as possible along the way, and uh, they are equal points. These guys are 115 points. These guys are 116, so it should be a pretty fair fight when all is said and done. 
Um, nobody has tacticians, so when we roll for priority, the only difference is that one of these guys, Lewis, good old Louie right there, is a scout, which means he can start the game an additional 12 inches forward, and he gives them a plus two on that roll. So first, let's move him up into position. All right, good old Louie is hiding in the rocks. He actually starts hidden as well, so he cannot be shot at on the first turn. We roll for priority. The orange die is going to be for the blues, white die for the Vandeans. And with a six and a six, but the Vandeans get a plus two because they've got a scout. Vandeans get to go first. I think the thing to do here is move uh, Jovan, nope, Odile. Odile is going to move up here. Now, ordinarily, he'd have to pause here and on the next move, climb over that. He's going to make a dex check. It's a little unclear how linear obstacles are treated. I'm going to treat it as a, a line of rough ground that you can bypass completely with successful dex checks. So what we're going to do is roll 2d6, add your initiative. His is only is 2, and then add an additional plus 2 because he's agile. If I can get an 8 or more, he's successful. So he gets a total of 12, and he's going to move his full 6. And that's going to be... Oh, he can run 9. So that's going to be a straight line to there is 4 inches, and he can actually move another 2 to there. Uh, or he can move up to there. He's actually going to go to right there. He is not hidden. Now it is the Blues turn and the commander of the Blues has the ability to issue an order. He's rank four so he can order four of his guys to run up with him and that's what he's gonna do. He realizes thanks to the motion, thanks to the movement, uh, that oh well he probably shouldn't have started there but what are you gonna do? So he's gonna rush up Three and then to there, and he can drag four guys along with him. We're close enough, so we'll just bring them up something like that. And that's all he can do for now. Uh, now we're going to move. He's going to rush up to there. We'll bring another blue up. And then Pa's going to move last, and he's going to move, that's only four inches, so that's going to do it for him. We'll bring this guy up, and now we're done. That's the end of the first turn. Rule for priority, no more plus two, that's only on the first turn. But they win anyway. So then the question becomes, what's the best play here? We're going to start with, uh, he has a musket, and we're going to go ahead and take that shot with him. And the way musket fire works, he has he is a sharpshooter. That's part of the reason we're going to start with him. Uh, he has to roll a 2d6, and he gets to re-roll any 1s and 2s. He has 6 and a 1, so he gets to re-roll this die, and he winds up with, let's make it count, an 8. He's firing fairly far away, so he has a minus one for that. His shoot score is a one. So what you do is all the modifiers balance out. You take your shooting score, subtract six, and that is your shoot score. So a result of two gives this boss man a light wound. So we've put a yellow marker on him to show his light wound and a blue marker beneath him to show that he has fired. He needs to spend a full turn to remove that, or in other words, to reload his musket. Now they get to nominate somebody to, uh, to fire up. And with the sheer strength of numbers, the blues are going to... What would the smart play be here? Uh, he's going to move, order them, and he can do the same thing. Now, he does not have a musket. He just has his saber. Uh, so he's going to... Let's order them to dash around. Uh, 
And we're actually going to move this guy. It's going to be a little easier to move this guy. Six. And three. So trying to stay out of the broken ground, that reduces your movement to three. So he's going to order three of his guys to follow him. And the other three will catch up as best they can. He's going to spend the full turn aiming. He wants to get off a good solid shot. And so we'll run this guy up nine inches right into the teeth of... Jovan. Now, Jovan has a shoot score of 1. He is shooting at less than 12 inches, so for his shooting, he only subtracts a 1. He's not a sharpshooter, so he rolls a 6. A 6 minus 6 means he does nothing. Alright, we're learning about the importance of aiming. We'll bring up another guy. And old Pa is going to aim as well. And then we'll bring up our last. And that's the end of the turn. So we roll for priority. Again, the white is our Vandeans. And this time, unfortunately for them, they do not get priority. So we'll once again... He's going to take the better part of Valor and run up along this side, this way. Is he? Oh, let's think about that. He's going to order them to charge in to here. So that's five inches of movement. Uh, four. And five. And then that's three for him. So they make it to the edge of the woods. And let's see how far into the woods they can go. It only moves six inches, which means... These guys, he can move one, he can move one, I think he can move two, and he was three, in three inches away, so he's going to move, does he contact Pa? I don't remember how far away he was, I think he was four inches away, so he can't quite get there. We're going to give Pa the benefit of the doubt. Remember, Pa reloaded this turn, so it's all going to come down to priority on the next turn. All right, I laid my cards out on the table. The face burka, I have my sympathies lie with the Vandeans. Let's, let's let the gods of chance decide. On a 1-2-3, he does get closed with. On a 4-5-6, on a 1-2-3, he's okay to fire. On a 4-5-6, he does close the gap. And on a 3, so there you go. Fate agrees with me. And that means he does have a chance to get off his shot. He is at point-blank range, so he gets a plus one to his roll. He is also has a shooting of two, and he aimed last turn, so now he gets to add a total of four to his die roll. Add four, subtract six, you get a five, and that means you've got a grievous wound. On a five... Final wound score of, oh, I'm sorry, 5 to 7 is another light wound. But when you receive a second light wound, that turns into a grievous wound, which lowers your initiative, your fight, and your shoot by 2. So the red, yellow becomes red. And the leader of the blues is hurting real bad. So the next thing we do is these blues are going to, uh, on a one, we'll start with the guy in front. On a one, two, three, he's going to charge that guy. On a four, five, six, he'll run up here. Okay, one, two, three. So uh, that is six inches away. So he runs up to make contact. And that's it for him. Uh, he's going to reload for his turn. And then we'll do the same thing. On a 1, 2, 3, we'll try to make contact with Pa. Oh, wait a second. You know what? I, oh, yeah, 6 inches means because he's in there, if you're within 6 inches, you can reach. So 1, 2, 3 will go for Pa. 4, 5, 6 will go over here. So on a 1, 2, 3, he's going to rush over towards Pa. He's got that log in the way. So again, I don't think he can quite make it. Uh, nobody wants to mess 
with, oh, they see he's reloading, I guess. All right, well, at any rate, that gives him a chance to unload on him. And remember, he was aiming last turn. Uh, the distance there is four inches. He doesn't get the bonus. He only gets a plus two to this roll. And by he, of course, I mean Lewis, who is a fast scout. So we add two to that roll. We get a six minus six is zero, so it does no good. And that means he's going to go ahead and close with him. I think that's it for the turn. And now we're going to roll for priority again. No, that's not it. We have a, we have the first of our combats here. Now, this is a bit of an unfair combat. You've got a rank 2 versus a rank 3. And, of course, unfair combats are the best kind of combats, aren't they? But he has a bayonet, so he's got a plus 1 to his initiative. Whereas old Lewis only has a dagger, so he's got a minus 1 to his initiative. So, initiative 2, initiative 1. And we're going to roll to see who attacks first. So he gets a 3, he gets a 0. The blue has successfully charged. Now we got to go to the tactics bag. And that's this bag here. The blue only gets to draw 2. So there's our blue's ploys. And good old Lewis gets to draw 3. I should point out, I have a slightly different mix of attack and defend. In my last game, I had a whole lot of everybody defending. So this time what I did is I pulled out three of the green gems. So whenever you see a green gem, you're gonna, that's going to be a point for, the def for defending ploys. Red or for attacking ploys. And we have nine and twelve so that people are going to be more likely to attack, which is, I think, going to work out a lot better because there aren't a whole lot of ploys going around. So... The way this works, he's going to say, I would like to make one attack, please. Then the defender has to announce if he's doing any ploys. And the defender says, yes, I would like to do a ploy. Now, normally, in an attack situation like this, it would be one die for the defender and two dice for the attacker. But by spending a green gem, he gets to add a second defense dice. And then both are going to add their fight. And see what happens. So we get a 9 versus a 6. He's got a fight skill of 2, and he's got a fight skill of 3. So we add 1, that's a 10, to a... Well, we, there's a couple of ways to do it, right? The difference is 1. So we're going to add 1 to this, so it's a 10 versus 6. So that does that leaves him as the loser. No effect. That is a successful defense. So now it's going to look like this. Two dice for the attacker versus one for the defender. And he says, no, 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 no. I need that extra defense dice because I'm fighting at a minus one here effectively. That's going to be a 10 versus a three. So a difference of seven is big. That is a grievous wound. And that's a real problem for him because... That lowers his fight score by two, and as you can see, Lewis has one more attack coming. Not only that, but this poor blue does not get the benefit of an extra die. So again, it's a straight roll-off with a plus one. For, no, it's a total of plus three for him. He's got a minus two to his fight skill because of that grievous wound. So that puts him out of the game. So those extra ploys can be pretty deadly. That being the end of the turn, we have to roll for priority. And again, the blues get the call. Oh, by the way, there's no morale. The blues only lost one guy. They have to lose two in order to start making morale checks. Uh, he's going to step back a pace and say, go get him, boys. And these three will close with Pa Corbo. And who?
everybody is engaged, so he doesn't have anybody to shoot at. Boy, it's a good thing he reloaded, huh? So he's going to make a dex check to leap over this wall, see if he can ignore it. And again, he's got a plus two, so he got his success. Uh, and it eight's a success on those dex checks. And he's going to close with him. We only have one more guy, so he'll, he can move a total of six inches uh, or three inches if he's clambering over that log. So he'll do the same thing. Because he is beset two to one, this blue is going to come over here and make it a much more fair fight. One to one. At least when he fired, I should have given him a blue chip. And I also realized I've been doing the movement wrong to the detriment of the brother's corbeau. You cannot run into hand-to-hand -hand combat, you can only move, which means if you're passing through broken ground, you can only move four inches. That's a problem for him because it means the best he can do is to get over to here. And four inches will put him, he's going to stop right there so that he does still have some cover. That means we got to start doing some combat, and of course, with priority, he's going to want to do this combat first. Um, the three-on-one means that, uh, um, let me think about this, they pool their combat, so they get a total of six chips, and Pa, as a hero rank four, he gets four, so he gets... We, oh, I drew five. Let me try that one more time. One, two, three, four, five. And then we have to roll for initiative. Pa's got an initiative of two, and they've got an initiative of two. One for being ranked two, one for having a bayonet. The orange die is for the blues. So Pa gets to go first, which is probably good for him. He's going to attack and say, what would you like to do? So there's his two dice. They would like to defend. So there's theirs. And he now has the option of rolling a... Oop, there's theirs. He has the option of spending this to roll another die. And I think he's going to take that. Because he's fighting in a minus one this turn. With a fight skill of effectively three, he's only fighting at a plus one. So he really needs to knock one of those guys out. So here we go. And Pa gets a total of ten. They get a total of seven. And that's it. So with a difference of three, he's going to do a... Light Wound, which gives a minus one initiative, minus one to shoot. Where's our Light Wound markers? That would be the yellow. And we'll just pick this guy right here. So there's his Light Wound marker. And that being the guy he was fighting, now he gets a chance to attack. But instead of doing that, he's just going to lend his support to the... We'll, we'll start on this side for these guys. Going to attack Paw. And I think because I have three dice and two dice, we'll go ahead and make these the attackers and this the defender. So he's going to go ahead and attack Pa. And of course, Pa has plenty of defensive ploys at his disposal. So we're at two plus two. The only question is, do they want to throw, go all in on one attack on Pa to see what kind of damage they can do? Or do they want to make a second attack? And I think at the minus one, I think you go with the second attack. Uh, so, white dice are at a plus one. Oh, that's going to be a problem. So, Pa is at a ten. Excuse No, that's good for Pa. So, Pa survives. And it's his turn to attack. And it's their turn to defend. This time it's going to be a straight two on two. With Pa rolling in white, he gets a plus one. So, that's a... Six for him, and a nine for them. So a difference of three means Pa now takes a light wound. And 
the difficulty there is that they get one more attack. And even though he's going to be rolling at two versus two, because of his light wound, he now has a minus one to his fight. He's fighting the second guy here. And that is going to be a two versus two. Because these are defensive, that'll be the end of it. Uh, with Pa rolling the white dice. So Pa gets a 10. He gets an 8. The 2 differential is another light wound. So Pa is definitely holding his own, and that's the middle guy there now, by delivering 2 light wounds in return for only the 1. So everybody with the yellow has a minus 1 to their initiative, their fight, and their shooting. Gonna put our gems back, and we still have a complicated melee game. Go figure, no surprise, for a game inspired by Three Musketeers. So now we have four versus two, and we'll do that one first. Combat pool of four versus a combat pool of two. Ooh, a lot of attacking, and let's see what our initiative differential is. Uh, the blue, that's Jovan, and he's fighting with the dagger, so he's only got an initiative of one. So the white die is actually a minus one. And the white die wins, so he gets to do his first attack, and he's going to make his attack. And he's going to make it a power blow. So he's going to roll three dice and try to finish this guy off. Three dice versus a single die. And we get a total of a differential here. And the fight here is going to be a three versus two. So add one to this score. Um, the low die gets tossed. So that's 11 versus three. That's a differential of eight. But he also has... He's also powerful. So it's actually a differential of nine. And that is... A Critical wound, he is out of the fight. And then we repeat the process. Oh, he has. And he has one attack left, so he can move to contact. We'll move this tree out of the way. So he can actually spend that extra ploy to close with him. And now Pa is no longer outnumbered three to one. Really needed that. We have another combat here. And again, it's going to be a total of, let's see, Jovan. Odile has three of these. Oh, the Corbeau brothers are fighting mad, and he is fighting a guy that only gets to draw two and is smart enough to defend, defend, defend. So there's the attack. There's the defend, and it's a straight roll. Oh, you know what I forgot? Initiative. Okay, Jovan wins. Attack, straight attack, two on two, and he's fighting at a plus one. Nine versus seven is a differential of two, so that is a light wound. He passes. He's got another attack, and this time he's going with the power blow, and to make matters worse, uh, he can defend... But to make matters worse, his fight score is now at a minus one, so he is fighting at a plus two. So we roll all them bones, and we discard the lowest. And with a plus two, we've got an eight versus a four. The differential of four is going to be a grievous wound. And he is in big trouble for the next round, but he did manage to survive, which counts for something ends the turn, and because there were only one critical wound that round, nobody has to make any uh, morale checks. So, we're right back to priority. 
And we've been at this for about a half an hour, so I'm going to call it quits here. Let you guys get back to your family, get back to working out, get back to living your own lives. And we will return tomorrow. Thank you for your input, Archie. I am also very excited to see what happens to the family corbeau, which will happen tomorrow. And tonight, be good to each other. Remember, I'm praying for you.